begins with one step forward with Xander Sprague demonstrating his new t-shirt. You've been on a roll. This is week one of the whole Epic Starts with One Foot Forward book launch plan. And in this past week, you have done so much. Thank you. Super stoked. Do you want to, before we get into all the things you've done in week one, I'd love you to say who you are, what you're up to writing this new book, this new way, and why it's meaningful for you and others to, to listen in to this particular show. Sure. My name is Xander Sprague, and I'm a motivational speaker and author. I live in the Bay Area, and I'm really excited about this process because I am a speaker, not a writer, even though I've written two books. The way I was doing that was actually by dictating them. And this whole idea of one, documenting uh, my whole process of becoming uh, even bigger as a speaker, having more people hear me and hopefully helping uh, millions of people around the world. Something I, I've really been working on for a while and frankly, not as successfully as I would like. So I, I was like, my good friend Aurora can help me. She's so fabulous. She knows so much. And this idea of using video and just being able to talk and then be able to use tools that um, Aurora and I have discovered to transcribe it. And then I can mold that clay into a book and uh, all of that is really exciting. And the whole sort of spoken author idea is just exciting. And, and to really be the first person who gets to do it with Aurora is awesome. I'm so glad that when I explained the spoken author concept to you, you're like, yes, I'm in. Absolutely. That's so crazy. The Gutenberg printing press was invented in the 1400s. And yes, it was revolutionary because at that time, people had to memorize the stories or hand write them out so that the... Uh, the stories wouldn't be lost or the information wouldn't be lost. I think stories are so important. There's the, the DNA of humanity. It's how we carry forward our wisdom. And even though it's 2020 and people have smartphones and YouTube and podcasts and audio recorders, we are still writing books the old way, which is I typically interview people. And then I've got all these lovely interviews that I love, but nobody gets to hear them. And then after many months of painstaking, polishing up the words, a printed textbook is delivered. And that's great. It's really important to have a book. It's very important for a speaker. And yet something gets lost in translation. So I'm like, we're doing this the wrong way around, especially for you, Xander. You're such an ebullient energy, such a natural speaker. And to try to put that in the written word, just little black dots on a white piece of paper, something gets lost in translation. So we're doing the discovery of the book content through these weekly interviews. This is only week one. Xander's already done a whole bunch of stuff, which she's gonna tell you in a moment. And chapter by chapter, we'll be exploring in depth Xander's outline for his upcoming book, which currently has got the working title Choice Champion, but that could change as we go through this because last week, Xander had the huge, it's interesting, once you start working on something, you I can't even remember what the name for this chapter was, but as we knew we were gonna talk about it, you had this brainstorm, oh, let's talk, let's call it epic, starts with one step forward. And I'm like, that's it, that's it. And you got the t-shirt, you got the URL, you got the trademark going, you've got your office reorganized, you've got lighting, you've got a mic. Wow. You're on a roll. <laughs> yeah, it is. I have to say, it is amazing. And I know you, uh, Rora, I know this. When we are open to creativity, how all of a sudden you have that lightning moment where you come up with something and and i know you had it with the whole spoken author idea right wasn't like you were percolating on it all of a sudden you just had this idea and was like wow that's really good and i remember when i was sitting on the couch and i was just thinking about the process with you and 
I've always liked the, the, the word epic. I, I think it, it, for me, is evocative of doing something big, something challenging, something exciting. And that whole epic begins with one step forward is... I was like, oh my God, that's great. And I remember I texted you right away. And I'm like, I oh my God, go check this out. This is oh my God, like, I love it. <laughs> and yeah, and also. I got to talk about that just for a second. So what okay. I loved about it so much, what I love about it so much is that epic is such a big word, such a big thing to lean into. And it's so juicy and exciting and motivating and humongous. But the one step forward is so doable. I love the yin yang in just one phrase. I love it. You nailed it. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, and I feel that, which is to say it, it is true that any journey does begin with a step forward, no matter how big it is. The, in the past, I've run marathons, and I remember my coach saying, a marathon starts with one step forward. And I, I will give credit where credit is due that, that, that part of that idea was because I've had that saying but i'm on an epic journey here i well i want to sorry didn't mean to cut you off but i want to add to that but go ahead what were you going to say no i was going to say i it, it's frustrating when you can so clearly see and i know rora i know you have had this frustration for a few years in working with me what is so possible but just not getting caught up with all of the how do I, I, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. And frankly, the only way any epic journey begins is with one step forward and realizing that along the way, and look, this will be documented, I will stumble. There will be things that I'm all excited about one week and find out. Wah, wah, wah. That's right. And for those of you watching this later, I invite you, whatever's stopping you, let Xander's journey, his epic journey, but just one step at a time, inspire you. If you want to be a speaker, if you want to be an author, if you have a big goal that's eluded you, what's one step that you could take? And also be, befriend the journey. And, you know, missteps are part of the learning process from all of the struggles I've had helping other clients publish books. I'm like, what if I could solve that problem and that problem? And then I had the breakthrough. Hey, let's do the spoken author idea. Let's just flip the order. And so problems are valuable because you grow, you learn, and maybe you'll solve a problem and that could be a whole new business. But I want to talk just for a moment about, I know and love Xander for many years. We've worked together for many years. He's a, a wonderful life uh, force. He's just so enthusiastic. He's so present. He's so genuine and he's always looking to help other people. And I've seen for so long, as he has too, he's seen this vision of him speaking to a stadium of people. And yet, like many people, he's, he is a published author, but writing is not his go-to. Speaking is his happy place. And so this is a great opportunity to speak out your book in this format. But I also really want to emphasize the word epic has a heroic element to it. It's epic poems because people had to memorize the stories. So put them in poems so they can memorize them and put them to song because they didn't have the printing press. Uh, but now we've got videos and audios. So I think it's so important that everybody steps into their life as the hero of their own journey, which is a huge thing. And release any victim energy, any woe is me energy, and then just take one itty bitty small step forward. Here's the thing, Aurora. My life experience is, gosh, 14 years ago. Gosh, that's hard to say because anyway, there were things that I really wanted. I started to run and I had always wanted to run like a marathon, but I had no idea and it seemed so impossible. And I joined Team in Training, which is fundraising for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, great organization, but I joined it because I wanted to, I wanted help in getting to my goal. And so I started off and I ran a half marathon and then I ran a couple more and then the next year I ran a marathon. And I remember that moment when 
I saw the 26 mile mark and I only had 0.2 to go. And by the way, longest 0.2 miles of your life, but anyway, but all of that time that I put in the running at five in the morning and the dark and the rain and, and the, and the long training runs and stuff to achieve that goal was just spectacular and such a moment and so epic for me. And another, you were talking about how people get stuck. They think about what they want to do and they get stuck. Yes, I get stuck all the time. I get stuck with stupid stuff. Oh my gosh. Rora and I were talking before we started. We were just chatting and I'm like, oh my gosh, what about selling the t-shirts, right? And Aurora's like, yeah, hey, that's great. The t-shirt's awesome, but uh, slow down. That's no, don't, don't get bogged down with that. So we get bogged down with things that are the roadblocks in front of us. Yeah. And, but, roadblocks yeah. affect everybody. And I don't know how you've done it, but you seem like you're quite good at shifting roadblocks. I'd love you to talk about that a bit, but I also would love- Well, that's a whole chapter. Oh, okay. We'll get to that later. I would love you to talk- Roblox coming up later in another interview. Exactly. I want to, uh, can you tease apart like the decision part? Because it seems to me when I'm working with people, I want them to be a hundred percent committed because as I'm so excited about things and so enthusiastic, I don't want to be more committed to my clients goals than they are. And it seems like 99% commitment is hard and a hundred percent is easy. So when you decided to run a marathon, was that the beginning of the epic journey or was it when you started training or what are your insights on well, the decision I think, part? I think you, obviously choosing to do a marathon is makes the training easy because you have a goal, right? And this whole epic journey that I'm on, I have seen it. I've had very good reasons why I delayed my, the beginning of my journey. Uh, I was getting my hours for my licensing for my professional clinical counseling license. Now I have that, I have to take the exam, but because of COVID, I was hoping I would have had it by now, but I don't, but I'm still working on that. I, I, I know I have experienced this many times. Making proclamations of what I'm doing and actually not really doing it. My first book, Making Lemonade, Choosing a Positive Pathway After Losing Your Sibling, which is about my experience of losing my sister. I wrote that book and I sat on it for five years. It was done. And I said, oh, I'm coming out with a book. I was no more coming out with a book than flying to the moon. It was done, but I wasn't doing anything to come out with the book. How come? And I had what, that, what was going on? Huh? What was going on? I was, I, I don't see myself as a writer. Writing's always been really hard. So the fact that I wrote a book was, I just didn't, I didn't believe that people would like what I had written. And, but I got tired of hearing myself say, oh, I'm coming out with a book. And I really wasn't. And I didn't want to be one of those people who for 20 years said he was coming out with a book and never came out with a book. Like, I don't like that. Yeah. It's so um, common though, because it's, it's so uh, difficult to put yourself out there. You're easy with speaking. Most people are terrified of public speaking. You're a happy as can be. Oh my love, I love public speaking. <laughs> but it's a, it's a moment to publish a book. That's a big deal. And then most people don't set themselves up for success. So oftentimes the result of publishing, pressing publish on Amazon is crickets because they haven't. The second edition is out. It's selling. I, I'm, not, I'm not an Amazon bestseller yet, but that's okay. It is helping people and uh, in this interesting experience, which I think those of you who are listening to this will possibly relate to, was for the first year that my book was out, when people told me how much they liked my book, how helpful it was, the interior dialogue that I was having was really? I would have believed more if they told me it wasn't worth the paper it was printed on than the fact that they liked my book. And it honestly took me about a year of people telling me they liked my book, they found it helpful, they recommended it, all of that, before I actually started to believe that I'd written something good. I can confess to that. I've published six books of my own and a, a bunch of others for clients. And uh, recently on Amazon, for my latest book, Thought Leader Launch, 
somebody who I don't know wrote a really nice five-star testimonial and he said, normally when I get an ebook after I read it, I just delete it because I want to move on. But this has got so many valuable things. I'm keeping it because I want to read it again and take action. And my response was, wow, somebody I don't know. And I didn't ask an arm wrestle to give me a, a review did because he wanted to. I'm like, wow. So this imposter syndrome thing, it doesn't go away the more books you publish, but we can just go, oh, there's that monkey mind. Uh, exactly. Yeah. And then he here I am. I can so clearly see I've been dreaming about all of this. If there are parts of this that fail. I think we could probably drop the if. <laughs> because if something isn't, if something's working 100% of the time, we're not playing at the edges of our comfort zone. I want to emphasize that this really is an epic journey especially for Xander, but also for me, because I'm launching my new book, Spoken Author, and my new idea about reversing the order. So I have a lot going on here as well that really matters to me to make a bigger contribution. But I want to zero in on Xander for a second, because right now, this is week one of his epic journey, but we are during the coronavirus period in 2020. There's a pandemic out there. There's no conferences or live events. They've all been canceled because you cannot uh, have a public gathering. And so in this difficult, most, I can't think of a more difficult time in recent history to launch as a public speaker, Xander decided, I'm going for it. I'm not going to put this dream on hold. I'm not going to wait for the wind conditions to be different. I'm not going to wait any longer. I am going for it. And if you are also wanting to be an author or speaker, I would love you to be inspired by Xander's journey of just deciding to go for it and not to put your own dreams on hold. And I'd love you to comment on that, Xander. Yeah, look, my own personal life experience is that life is short. You don't know when, when your life might end. I'm not trying to be modeling, but I look at my sister. She was 30 years old and she was murdered and it was horrible. And so you don't know. And there are all those cliches. You only have one go round. You only go around once, all of that. I think that any of us can lean into the, I want to do this. And even though there may be lots of people who think that you're crazy for doing it, you think you're crazy for trying it. You don't regret trying right? Yeah. Because all of us have done stuff in our life that we weren't successful, but perhaps uh, we were disappointed. However, you learn something from that, right? You're out there, you're putting yourself out there. And if you think about, for example, Olympic level athletes, there was a, a guy that I met many years ago, who was a swimmer. Uh, from New Zealand, he ended up winning a bronze medal in the Olympics. And he said, I trained 13 years for 30 seconds. Wow. 13 years for 30 seconds. And that's exactly true. And think, they, they think about people who put that amount of commitment and they don't succeed or they don't hit the goal that they want. The fourth place winner is not yeah, known, yeah. right? And, and, but that doesn't stop all of those people from still pursuing that goal, even though part of them has to know that their chance of, of success is probably statistically quite low. What I like about Epic is one step forward. I think for me anyway, it reframes success as the journey itself, as opposed to that 30 seconds with the, well, of course the gold, it is. gold medal. Yeah. Right. No, but, but it is. I, I, will always, I will come back and talk about the marathoning because it, it is so true, which is obviously the goal is to cross that finish line. In the meantime, there's 26.2 miles that I got to cover to have that last step to cross that finish line. 
there's a lot that has to go on for me to then be able to hit that goal. There are going to be those miles in this epic marathon that I'm on, which are going to be really hard, where I may start to doubt what the heck am I doing? I can tell you that in all of the endurance events I've done in the last 12 years, Aurora, <laughs> it always seemed like a good idea five months ago, but when I'm actually <laughs> doing it, it didn't seem quite as good. <laughs> It seemed like a good idea at the time. I want to really emphasize this because what's different about Epic is One Step Forward is what we're calling these ongoing interviews is that it's not like a podcast interview where you've got a polished author who's been media trained with his book is already out. It's reversing that. So this is a, you're seeing a book and a speaker develop in real time. So it's got some elements of a podcast and some elements of interviewing an author after his book is out, but it's also got some elements of a reality TV show. You're seeing an epic journey in real time. And I think the value in reality TV shows is we don't know what's gonna happen, but we're playing all out. And Xander, I know from experience, plays all out. And that can be very useful and valuable and inspiring to others to play all out and also to see the things that you might also think were good ideas at the time but didn't work out well for you because we're not going to hide those things that could potentially be seen as missteps because we don't want you to go down that go down that rabbit hole if it doesn't have a payoff so it's got it's reality tv show meets uh podcast meets book author slash speaker Absolutely. Yeah. And, and yeah, there are the things that, that don't work out. There's, but I think it also is how you deal with the fact that awesome idea from last week just isn't going to work out. And you were mentioning earlier, obviously my goal is to fill up stadiums and talk to tens of thousands of people. I can't do that right now. So I could say, oh, until I can do that. But that's uh, a cop-out to say, I'm putting my dream on hold because of this. I I'm having to shift how I do it. Ladies, gentlemen, and everyone, the we that I am talking to, I have no idea how I'm going to do this. But here's what I do know. I am going to do this. I am on this epic journey. I have taken some steps forward. And the amazing thing is that it isn't nearly as difficult as you think it is. You simply have to have a plan that you can then execute to. And you're gonna be seeing that plan. You'll hear Aurora and I talking about what those plans are and, oh gee, that I just didn't do it. Okay, that happens. We have great plans, mohaha. And yeah. people uh, watching at home can implement the parts of the plan that work brilliantly and skip the parts that Absolutely. don't. But we do have a whole big plan, which I won't burden the listeners with uh, right now. <laughs> but I, you know, I got big plans for you, Xander. Um, you're going to be a best-selling author if I have my way with you. And I will Absolutely. have my way with you because I'm a I might be small, but I'm bossy. <laughs> yeah. What else do you want to share about Epic is one step forward? I think the main thing I want to share, oh, here's something I think is really important. It's coming back, circling back to the dis decision point. A lot of people believe that they are better off by having wiggle room. And actually studies show that if you make a decision that's irrevocable, you're actually happier which is surprising. And we'll have to fill in the exact reference later, but they did the study with paintings and they brought people paintings to choose from and they asked them to rank the paintings in their order of preference. I believe there were uh, six paintings and then they didn't allow them to choose painting number one or two, but they allowed them to choose from painting three and down. So people would choose the painting that they wanted to keep, but these were old folks in an old folks home. So they had Alzheimer's and wouldn't remember which choice they had made. So they would leave the room 
And then they would come back a little bit later, not that much later because the people had Alzheimer's and ask them to rank the paintings in terms of which one they preferred. Oops, I forgot an important part of the story. They could, they could either keep with their choice or they could change it again later. Actually, I'm mixing up two stories, but anyway, the point stands. Back to the old people in the old folks' home. They brought the paintings back in, asked them to rank them in order of preference. And even though they had no recollection of ever seeing the people before or seeing the paintings before, they chose the one that they had chosen, like number three or down, as the, the top ranked one. The other experiment was somewhat similar, but it was with college students. And at the end of, of the semester, they were allowed to keep either any one of their paintings or works of art that they had created during the class. But they had to decide right then and there because the, the story was the professor was leaving and that, that was it. It was a final choice. Or they could, the second group, they could change their minds and switch it out. And the results were surprising. The kids who were told, or the youth, young adults who were told, that's it, choose, there's no going back. They really liked their choice. They were very happy with it. Whereas the people who had been told, you can reverse your decision and, and make a different choice within this window of opportunity, they were less happy with either choice right. because they agonized over it. And to add a... Well, personal, like a personal story about the literally not being able to change your mind. I remember when I was about 12, I was at a camp and we went to this quarry. And we had the opportunity to jump off of a 60 foot cliff into water. And I stood on the edge and I was scared. I was really scared. And I stepped off. And the thing that went through my mind in that moment was I'm fully committed. I can't like, I can't change my mind. Gravity's got a hold of me. There's, I can't grab on anything. I can't stop this. So fully commit to it. And I think just like you were saying, Aurora, when you don't have another choice, when you have to do it, it is, you figure out how you're going to make the best of it. And clearly I survived into the water and that started a whole lifelong, uh, lifelong. I love doing stuff that scares the bejesus out of myself and pushes me. I've done bungee jumping, skydiving. I love to ride my road bike down hills as fast as I possibly can because I love that feeling, that adrenaline rush. I had the same adrenaline rush thinking about the journey that I'm beginning here. And I think that's important. I think we all have to just, just do it. Seriously, I hate to be so cliche all here, but I think I know I, I, uh, here's what I want. So I'm going to go for it. And the parts that aren't successful, that's okay. I'm trying. We're never 100% successful in everything that we do. Well, the only thing you can be 100% sure of is you will fail at everything you don't attempt. I want you in a second to paint a picture of your long-term goal, your vision for that. And while you're thinking about that, I want to share that another client of mine, whom you know, Sandra, Audrey, she realizes that anything that scares her that's the thing she has to do. So she's writing her book and, and working with me on, a, on another program to, to write her book because the idea of writing her book really scared her. And she's like, okay, I got to do it then. <sighs> so can you paint a picture of what you're going for, what your big, bold, beautiful goal is? Well, now, I, I want to be able to help and inspire people around the world. I want people to really realize that they have choice in their life and that choice is so powerful and that when we utilize choice, epic things can and will happen in your life. And I, I, I want to be able to give speeches around the world. I want to millions of people start to do big or small, whatever your epic journey is, 
to realize that you are the captain of your ship and you can do this. All it requires is for you to take that one step forward. And here's something that I'm gonna tell you that I've learned. That first step is not nearly as difficult as you think it is. And once you do it, you're like, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, okay, I can do that. Let me, oh, I'll, I'll do the next step. And here's the thing, I'll, 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 again, keep coming back to the marathon, but the marathon training, I had no idea how I was gonna do it, but I was handed a schedule. And all I had to do was look at and say, oh, it's Wednesday, I need to go run for 45 minutes. I can do that. I didn't have to worry about the rest of how the whole thing was going to happen. I just had that one task to do. It is That's what I really like. I'm sorry. Go ahead. It's amazing what we can achieve when we take it one bite at a time. And it brings us into the present moment, which is the point of power. So having the big epic vision and then taking one step forward Usually people get all stumbled up because they're trying to figure out all the different steps that they're going to take to climb the mountain. And that is overwhelming. But what is one meaningful step to take forward on your goal, on anyone's goal, is usually pretty clear. And even though we do have a big master blueprint plan for launching you to the next level as a thought leader, Xander, it's going to be like a river. It'll meander a little bit, but each step will, once taken, reveal the next step. And we'll find, by using a, a sailboat a metaphor, we'll find lifts and opportunities where things go well. We'll get some hits where things don't go well. Sometimes the current will be for us. Sometimes it'll be against us, but it'll always be clear what to do with just that one step forward. And being in the present is such a powerful place to be, just focused on running that next step or that next point two of the 26 mile marathon run right. in the present moment. You can't run it in the future moment. No. But that's where the power is too, in the present. You can only, I can only run the road that's in front of me. I can think about the, the next mile, the next five miles, whatever but I actually have to just run what's right in front of me right now, okay? Yeah. Here you and I are. I can only deal with what's going on right now. I can think about the stuff in the future, but frankly, until I get to it, I can't actually cross that piece of road. This may actually turn into the title of your book because I love this epic starts with one step forward, but we'll stay tuned on that. <laughs> so do you have a couple of tips for the listeners? Something I do. they can do? I do. I know people are prepared for different things. So I'm going to give you a beginner and intermediate and an advanced. So if you are intrigued by this idea and are like, oh my God, where do I start? Choose a goal. So much easier to get someplace if you know where you're going. Think about if you decide to go to the store, you have a destination. So it's easy to get there. Very rarely do I get in the car, just start to drive around in hope that I end up where it is that I actually need to be, okay? None of us can get there. So have a goal. If you're intermediate, set the goal and choose a date that you're going to try and hit that goal by. Deadlines are actually really helpful. It's that, uh, Aurora, what you were talking about, that coming back to have, not having a choice. Once I had signed up for and paid for a marathon, I had a date. I, had a, I knew, here's where this is happening. And if I decide not to do that marathon, they still have my money. I don't get it back. And I don't know about you, but once I pay for something, I actually want to at least try and get my money's worth out of it. I may not. And it's absolutely possible when you go to run a marathon, something happens, you get injured, whatever, and you can't finish. But at There's least something you tried. so focusing about having a date, like even absolutely. knowing that you were going to talk to me today. Exactly. Like, okay. Momentum happens. Absolutely. And then for the advanced, get an accountability partner. Mm. You've set, you've set your goal, you've set a date. Now you need someone 
who is going to help keep you accountable. Absolutely. Those are three very easy and profound action steps. They're, they're, they're uh, not to be underestimated in the value. So set a goal, something that inspires you. If you're more uh, intermediate then also set a date, because if you don't take any action, it's a dream, not a goal, and then get an accountability buddy or coach, somebody to hold you accountable. Those are three easy things and good. I like that. Very doable. So anything further to add on the general topic of Epic is one step forward. And then let's see if we can choose our topic for our next interview. Sure. Epic does begin with one step forward and take that step. Like it just left repeat. Like just once you start, it's just not as difficult as we we all make it. There are big things that we want to do in our life and We make, gosh, we all make stuff so much more difficult than it really needs to be. We get all stuck in our head. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And again, it it just, you take that first step and go, oh, okay. That wasn't that hard. Mm -hmm. That was okay. Let's give it. Yeah, go ahead. Let me give just one more analogy that may help people. I'm I'm all about you, you guys gals and people, everybody, you're, you're going to find that I love, I will give you like 52 different analogies because something will land with you and go, "Ah, I get that. I call it the pizza analogy. Okay. I love pizza, but when I go to eat a pizza, I don't eat the whole thing all at once. It's sliced up for you and you eat one slice at a time and then you're able to eat a whole pizza or half a pizza or whatever. That's how and that's how we eat any kind of food. It's in bite-sized pieces. Rarely do we shove the whole thing into our mouth unless it's popcorn and it falls everywhere, but that's a totally different podcast. But my point is, if you break it down into bite-sized pieces, it, it becomes a lot easier. Absolutely. I like that pizza. We have a couple of gifts for the listeners. Uh, I know people can go to xandersprague.com and they're going to get some epic sayings and stuff. I'll have you flesh that out in just a second. People can also go to thoughtleaderlaunch.com and get the Thought Leader Starter Kit or Starter Library at thoughtleaderlaunch.com. And uh, you can stay tuned about Spoken Author because that's uh, not available yet because Xander is my number one case study. (laughs) So uh, you want to spell Xander Sprague and tell a little bit about your gift for the listeners? Sure. So it's Xander Sprague is Z-A-N-D-E-R-S-P-R-A-G-U-E.com. And um, on the website, you're going to just find sayings that I have found to really help inspire me for my epic journey. And I hope you will find some that resonate with you. I think these are so valuable, right? They can print, print it out, put them on their fridge, put them in their car, put them places where they will see, because we all need a little reminders about being epic and taking that one step forward. So that's a super valuable uh, little gift. So now go to xandersprague.com and put your email in and grab those gifts and go to thoughtleaderlaunch.com and put your email in and get your starter library to get you going on your thought leader journey for free. So those are our two gifts for you. And Xander, did you have anything else you want to add right now to the epic starts with one step forward before we talk about what's coming next? You know, I think I've said a lot. I think so too. (laughs) You are a natural born speaker. (laughs) I've yet to find a mic or a camera that I don't like to talk into. No, when we have live events, it's always hard to get the mic out of your hand because it's like just belongs there. Okay. Do you have our chapter list? Because I didn't, I didn't decide what we would do next week or have, I didn't have a suggestion. Do you know what you want to talk about next? Uh, Hold on one second. Because I'm going to just quickly. He has a one page chapter outline in front of him that he's just perusing to see which one's got exactly. yes on it. I'm going to pause. No, no, I got it. Okay. 
Next week, we will be talking about how to boldly proclaim your intentions and dreams. Mm, how to boldly proclaim your intentions and dreams. Ooh, I like that. Yes. I love it. Okay, so you want to catch the next episode, how to boldly proclaim your intentions and dreams as we continue this epic journey with the amazing, the wonderful, the fantabulous Xander Sprague and Aurora Winter. Of course. So. <laughs> Whoops. Let us not forget you, Aurora. Let's not forget me because I am a Leo, so I have to have a bit of spotlight. So that's it again, Xander Sprague, Aurora Winter, and we'll see you on the next episode.